that would be best for the economy is when the economy is booming. Because then if the consumer steps down and saves more, there'll be some other player in the economy who's likely to step up their spending. Businesses may spend more on capital goods or we may export more. So there'll be some replacement for the loss in consumer spending. On the other hand, if we're in a bust, as we are now, and the consumer steps down, then the question is, who's going to step up? Uh, consumption is 70% of all spending, so consumption is key. So with less consumption, at the same time that firms are retrenching and exports are falling, what that does is make the downturn worse. The government needs to do is said lean against the wind. It needs to spend when all other components of spending are falling. So right now, what are the other components? Consumption of households, that's going down. Spending on new houses is going down. Spending by firms on plant and equipment, that's going down. Exports are going down. So everything else is going down. So the government leans against the wind, then it has to increase its spending or cut taxes to try to boost other spending. Now the other part of it is, and that's the part that we often forget, is that when the economy improves, leaning against the wind means then the government's going to have to pull back on its spending. So the government should be, in this case, the government would be running deficits in, in tough times, but it needs to reduce those deficits when the economy gets healthier. They, they want to mitigate foreclosures, but uh, suppose somebody's house is uh, under their mortgage is underwater, which means that they've got a mortgage, let's say, for five hundred thousand dollars, but now their home is only valued at four hundred thousand dollars. So some of those people are going to walk away from their loan because the government has no recourse to any other of their assets. So some of them will just walk away. And they think, why pay this mortgage? It just walk away, save me $100,000. So what the government is trying to figure out now and to model, who's most likely to walk away and who will continue to pay their mortgage? Okay. Because we really don't want to subsidize those people who will willingly continue to pay their mortgage, hoping that the housing prices will rise and they want to keep uh, a good credit record. National Bureau of Economic Research is the nonprofit agency that dates beginning and end of recessions. And they date them, they don't forecast them, so they wait till they have enough data to date the beginning. So in December of this of 2008, they told us the recession started in December of 2007. So actually when they dated it, it was already one year old. And um, this year, uh, growth is forecast to be negative, that we're going to have a, a decline in the economy this year. So I think we'll be fortunate if the trough of the economy is reached at the end of 2009. But having said that, that doesn't mean that we're going to bounce back uh, in 2010 very vigorously, so growth could still be sluggish. You know, at one time a few years ago, uh, we talked about decoupling. I always thought that decoupling would be was a myth, but the idea was that even if we slowed down, that the rest of the world and the developing world, like China and India, could stay strong enough uh, to sort of offset our downturn. But that isn't what has happened at all. This uh, slowdown, which was made in the U.S., has spread through the rest of the world through, I think, two channels: trade and fear. So if you look at China, for instance, China's financial sector has not in any way been involved with the crisis in the U.S. in the sense that it hasn't bought any of these toxic assets like the European banks have, and it hasn't uh, been involved in the type of lending that we have been involved in. So China or Japan directly have not been involved in the financial crisis, and yet their economies are suffering. we get back to an economy that's closer to potential, and we will get there. Uh, there will be uh, 
some positive effects. If, for instance, we change our mix of spending, so if when we're back in a healthy economy, actually the American consumer has does build up some of their savings and we consume less, and we have more spending coming from firms spending on plant and equipment, and if we have more spending coming from exports because we're selling more to the rest of the world. That will also depend on the rest of the world changing their ways because that means developed country, developing countries aren't going to be able to just count on growing by selling to us. They're going to have to increase their domestic demand and sell less to us. And that will be a healthier mix with fewer imbalances. And of course the other thing is uh, that we will hopefully have a healthier financial sector. Right now we're dealing with sort of all the problems, but the longer term the government has to uh, and will take uh, a long and hard look about restructuring the financial system.